This is In the Trenches, Broadcast 62. Welcome to In the Trenches, where entrepreneurs, artists, writers, designers, inventors, warriors, and leaders share their stories of doing the hard, creative work that impacts all of our lives. Let the journey inspire you to do something worthwhile, build something bold, and create your life's work. And now, your host, Tom Morgus. Welcome back to another broadcast of In the Trenches. Today's guest is Jeff Woods, and Jeff is the host of the Mentee Podcast, which is a weekly podcast that allows him to share the bounty of his acquired wisdom with others who are on a similar quest from employee to entrepreneur, highlighting the mentors guiding him to success. So I think it's actually a pretty cool idea for a podcast, and I really enjoyed listening to it. And uh, after I got a chance to to listen to a couple episodes, I knew I wanted to get Jeff on the show. So I'm really excited to have Jeff on the show today to actually talk about the podcast, how he's doing that, how he's growing it, and then kind of what he's learned from these people that he's interviewed. So Jeff, thanks so much for being on the call with us today. Hey, Tom, thanks for having me here. Of course. So let's start at the beginning. Before the Mentee Podcast, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, like what led you to doing this today. Sure, sure. So I'm in medical device sales, and I'm still in medical device sales. And uh, I'm just such a cool job, blessed. I get to wear scrubs every day, so people mistakenly call me doctor, and I don't always correct them unless they're complaining of chest pains. Uh, I get to go in hospitals. I sell a device that actually saves lives and been able to make a lot of money doing it and really just control my schedule. I work from home. I talk to my boss when I call him. It's pretty cool. But At the end of 2013, and I think you find this with really anybody who has that entrepreneurial fire, there's a defining moment that everything changes. And for me, that was at the very end of 2013, one of my colleagues had a stroke. And at the time, he was 35 years old. And when you think about that, it's like, holy crap, somebody 35 having a stroke? That's nuts. And that's what was going through my mind. And I just, in that moment, you're going, okay, I've got a wife. I've got a baby. I've got a mortgage. What happens to them if something happens to me? And I didn't like that answer. And then the next week, I'm thinking, okay, well, what happens if something happens to this job? I don't know where I can go and earn this level of income. And the next week, the way that the universe had it, my income ended up getting slashed by 40% overnight, which, think about it, what would you do if all of a sudden 40% of your income just poof, gone? It's not a fun place to be. In that moment, I heard this quote that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with from Jim Rohn. And have you heard that one, Tom? Yes, I have. Big fan of Jim Rohn. Yeah. And I feel like most people have heard it, yet they've never taken the time to stop and say, who are my five? Who are the five people I actually spend the most time with? And are they already where I want to be? That was a sobering experience because I realized while my friends were amazing, they couldn't help me get where I wanted to be. And so I set out on a journey just to surround myself with people who were living that life. And you fast forward six months, all of a sudden I have an army of really, really high level mentors. And I'll share a few of them. I don't share this to brag. I really don't. I share this to show you what can happen if you put some intention behind this. And so um, even as as you and I hopped on today, when I said, hold on for a second, that was the guy who called me. His name's Gene McNaughton. He was the executive vice president of sales for Tony Robbins. He literally helped build Tony's empire and he's helping me build my coaching business. So I record my conversations with Gene and I, re- and I release them to everybody. If, if you've heard the, of the movie Jerry Maguire, the guy who ran that sports agency in real life, his name is Dave Meltzer. He's one of my mentors. So just I feel blessed to have these people in my life. And I started the Mentee Podcast because I realized not everybody has the opportunity to sit down with these guys. And somehow I do. And so why don't I just record those conversations and release them to you so that you get access and you upgrade your five. That's awesome. So now tell me a little bit about that. Like I, I love the the concept behind it because I'm a big fan of the idea of mentorship, not maybe necessarily in the, the traditional sense, which I feel like sometimes it's hard to come across, like the idea of like, um, you know, uh, having, you know, somebody who you, you come to in maybe in person and you work with or whatever that, that context, but maybe in the, definitely in the, in the, which I think that would be cool potentially, but I think in the context of 
that there are a lot of very smart people that we have the potential to tap into, I think, and kind of get inside their brains a little bit. And and so I like the idea, any even one conversation with somebody who's kind of where you want to be, like you described, which I really appreciated, that's awesome, um, can be huge. And that's one of the reasons I started a podcast, actually, was to be able to connect with people who I basically viewed as smarter than me and better than me in different ways. And that's really the only people I bring onto the show. So congratulations right there, Jeff. And so the point <laughs> Thank is... Thank you. Yeah, so the point is, I think that's where I, I get a lot of my growth from, is, is from having these conversations. But... But I'm, I feel like you kind of took it to the next level with this. So tell me a little bit about like how you were able to connect with these guys in the first place. Sure. And, and this is where, for anybody who's listening and depending on how Tom wants to take this interview, my, my hope is that you'll walk away, you'll press pause at the end of this and go, I actually know what I can do to go surround myself with some of these people. And so that's my intention. And I also will offer you guys a free course that will hold your hand to developing seven meaningful relationships with seven awesome people in seven days or less. And that's at findthebestmentors.com. But the first thing that you're going to realize, and, and Tom, hopefully I can role play with you on this one. You got to get clarity on where you need help most because a mentor can help you best in their area of expertise. You know, I'm not going to go to somebody who happens to be an expert at, um, What's an example? Let's say uh, trading, stock market, yep. and ask him for advice on real estate, unless he happens to be an expert in real estate. So what is the area that you need expert advice and expert counsel? So Tom, out of everything that you're working on right now, what is the one thing that you need the most help with? Ooh, this is good. Um, right now, I need the most help with, I'm trying to build a publisher's empire into the premier self-publishing platform, self-publishing course, self-publishing program, basically self-publishing community in the world. So I need to connect myself or I, I'm lo- I, I need help with, with building that. So, so does that answer your question? Okay. Yes. So in this, and I asked that specific question and I'm role-playing this with Tom so that you who are, who is listening to this can go through the same steps. And the yeah, first question, good. I'm glad I don't yeah. have to pay for this. This is awesome. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so for you who is listening, what is the number one thing you need the most help with right now? Tom has incredible clarity. He wants to turn his program into the premier number one platform for self-publishing. Yep. Now here is my question. If you had to envision the ideal mentor who could guide you, who would they be? Or describe, it doesn't have to be a specific person, but describe that person to me. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that person would have to have actually built a community similar to the one I guess I might envision in my head that I would want to build. So um, I guess when I think about it, some of the guys that I definitely respect who are, are doing like rocking and rolling communities really well. John Lee Dumas, I think he's done an awesome job with his podcast, Paradise. Um, uh, the f- guys at Fizzle, I think they run an ec- excellent membership site. Um, those are just two examples right off the cuff because um, I'm under pressure right now, but maybe that'll do for now. So what I'm walking away with is not necessarily that you need to surround yourself with somebody who's an expert in self-publishing, but more somebody who is an expert at growing and scaling communities, online digital communities. That's exactly it. I don't, yeah, I don't need the help with the self-publishing thing. Got that under wraps. What I'm, yeah, what I definitely need help with is that is how to actually build that community. Beautiful. Okay. And now here's, here's the power for anybody who's listening in this line of questioning. When I asked him where he needed the most help, I walked away with going, okay, I need to introduce him to people who are self-publishing experts who can help him. But that's not really where it is. Cause when you say Mm -hmm. describe the person, ideal person who can guide you, I come to find out that it is a person who has built a strong community. Now, the Mm -hmm. fact that Tom has been able to articulate that so clearly in one to two sentences for me is incredibly powerful. Okay. So that's step one. All right, you get that clarity and be able to identify it and nail it down within two sentences or less. The second thing that you really would have to do in this case is just start talking about it. 80% of everything you need is already within your circle of influence, can be accomplished within your existing relationships, yet we do not leverage our relationships appropriately. And so what you can do, and I challenge you to do this today, to at some point when you are done with this, pick up the phone and call somebody you're incredibly comfortable with, like a best friend, somebody who, you know, they're going to take your call and say, what's up, best friend? They'll go, not much. What's up with you? Because <laughs> that's what we say. In that moment, instead of saying not much, which you say 99.999% of the time, I want you to make an <laughs> adjustment. I want you to say, you know, a lot recently, I finally realized that 
I need to surround myself and form relationships with some people who have developed really successful online platforms like the guys at Fizzle, like the John Lee Dumases, mm-hmm. like the Pat Flints, and zip your mouth. You haven't asked for anything. Here is what is going to happen. One of four things. Number one, that person you are talking to, your best friend, happens to be a master at developing online communities and you never knew it somehow. Okay, maybe that's not it. But which, what happened and when, when you told me this just now, Tom, is I'm immediately racking my brain for who I know. I can't help it. It's like if I ask you, the listeners, to describe me right now, why is the sky blue? Honestly, tell me, why is the sky blue? Immediately, your brain starts to process the question. So the moment you start telling people where you need help on a subconscious level, their brain starts processing it and seeing how they can help you. And they're thinking of people they can connect you with. And you have no idea who they know. If you've ever heard of the concept of six degrees of separation, this is leveraging it at its finest. You are reaching out to your one degrees and you are tapping into them. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, and I know the idea of of the the degrees of separation, which I think is super powerful, but I love the context that you put this in. So you're just saying start with a phone call just even to a friend that you Absolutely. are comfortable with. Okay. Call to the people who you feel comfortable sharing it with, practice with them, and develop the habit of sharing this to the point that when you meet a random person and you just start having a conversation, you are able to easily weave this in. And this is one of the things that I teach in that seven day course is yeah. how can you get this level of clarity? You, I will hold your hand to get this level of clarity. And for seven days, I will give you specific actions on who to call and what to say to these people. And by the end of it, I've had people email me. They, they connected with 15 people in seven days, leveraging this one thing thing. It is incredibly powerful. So just to clarify, because I I, I really like this and I actually think I want to try this as an experiment um, this week. So when you said, I love the idea of just calling a a friend or something like that. And it's true. It's like we have this natural response to say, what are you up to? Oh, nothing much. What are you up to? Nothing much. That kind of thing. Right. And to just stop and instead of say that, then say something. So I'm curious, would you, do you pose it as a question or do you say, this is what I'm working on? So, and this is where is you gain your confidence, you can make an adjustment. At first, I would just start weaving in it. Hey, uh, in my story, I first started out wanting to get into real estate. When the stroke happened and everything, I knew I wanted to build passive income. I wanted to get into real estate. I knew I needed to surround myself with successful real estate investors. So I would just start saying, they'd say, what's going on with you? I'd say, you know, I've recently been inspired to get into real estate and I'm looking to surround myself with successful commercial real estate investors. And I'd zip my mouth. Most people didn't say anything. But the very first time I did it, In fact, the very first time I said that, the guy I was talking to invited me to his house the next day. And this was the first time I met this guy, and he was a heavy hitter. And he invited me to his house. I was like, what? And he introduced me to this guy named Dave Michael. Dave and I hit it off. I come to find out Dave's done over 10,000 real estate transactions. And... And we developed enough of a relationship to the point where I got a call one day, and he ended up taking me in as a partner. And because that very first time I opened my mouth, I now own a part of a commercial building on the East Coast. That's awesome. So it freaking works. <laughs> yeah, this is powerful. So then what, what, what do you, is this, is like, is this the, the beginning and end of it all? Is it just that simple? No, no. I mean, if we're talking about delivering the number one knowledge bomb, like the highest leverage activity to get you results fast, I would say start here. But if you're really looking to get long-term results, at least what has worked best for me is I've recognized that My five are my five for a reason, and that's because my network is limited. I want to expand my network so that that six degrees of separation becomes a lot more powerful. And in order to do so, I recognized I had to get off my assets. I had to go play where the players played and start attending conferences, seminars, networking events. And I started getting in the room, sometimes even paying to get in the room. And the people who spoke on stage... Those were the thought leaders. Those were the people I went after. That's how I was able to surround myself with the guy who ran Tony Robbins' company. That's how I was able to meet Dave, the guy who ran the Jerry Maguire firm. All those people were on stage. And as they came off, I approached them and was able to capture their interest within 10 to 15 seconds and get them to be interested in me and developed a relationship from there. All right. Tell me about that process. How do you do that in 15 seconds? Yeah. So this is where it comes down to the concept. And I learned this from Dave Meltzer, being more interested than interesting. I'll say that again. You have to be more interested than interesting. You have to be more interested in them than trying to get them to think that you are interesting. But when you do that, they think that you're interesting, which is 
I said interesting a lot there. I did intentionally. <laughs> um, well, it's like the uh, what 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 book is that making me think of right now? Um, the seven friends, seven habits oh, of highly effective people. How to win no, friends and influence people. How to win friends and influence people, isn't it? I was about to just roll off as many books as I could as fast yeah. as possible. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those. Is, I think it's that one. <laughs> yeah. I'm them making a, 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 one of the authors making a comment that, that was, that's the case, right? It's, if we are interested in somebody else, if we're asking questions, they, we, we like people that ask us questions. You know, it's we, like a, it's human nature almost. It's, uh-huh. it's kind of bizarre, but it's a really powerful thing if you can kind of harness it. So, so how, so, when, okay, so go, so go ahead. I kind of interrupted you. I'll just tell the story of how I leveraged this in person. Okay. So most people, when they want, want to approach somebody, they immediately feel like they have to impress them, whether it's rattling off your resume or telling them what you're looking for. Bottom line, they don't give two craps about you. They don't. So what can you do when you approach them that will be different from everybody else, that will capture their interest and make them interested? I will preface this by saying your approach has to be genuine. You know, you can't fake this. If you fake it, they're going to see through it. But here's a real life example. I was in I paid to get into the room at this at a certain seminar conference, and Dave Meltzer spoke, the guy who ran uh, the sports agency Jerry Maguire was based on. And I'm hearing his story, and it just hit me like a freaking bullseye. And I knew that I had to approach him, but I am freaking nervous. This guy, multi, multi, multi-millionaire. And I have no idea what in the world I can say to him or how in the world I will get him to commit to spending time to me. But all of a sudden, I just find that my feet are going left, right, left, right, left, right. And all of a sudden, I am smack dad in front of Dave and I realize I just need to start talking. In that moment, I dropped my ego. I got vulnerable and I got honest. And I want you to recognize what I just said. I got vulnerable and I got honest. And I looked at him and I said, Dave, first and foremost, thank you. Your words resonated with me so deeply. I've been going through this crossroads in my life. And frankly, up until this point, I have felt lost. And after hearing you speak, I feel like I have gained a level of clarity and direction for the first time. And I don't know what I could possibly do to add value to you. But if you would be willing to spend 15 minutes with me, whether in person or over the phone, I promise I will find a way. Where do you live? How can we make this happen? What do you think you said? Hmm. Get out of here, you creep. No, I'm, yeah, like exactly. he had to, I'm sure you had to say yes. It's a compelling, it's a, basically it's, there's a no loose situation there. Exactly. And, and no joke. I said it just like that. There was honesty there. There was vulnerability. It was genuine. And I was asking him for help and he said, yes. And I said, where do you live? Turns out he lives less than a mile from my house. Wow. I had no idea. We weren't even in the same cities where we live. We were in San Diego. We both live in Orange County. And, um, that has blossomed into an amazing relationship where we meet every two weeks now and it's changed my life. So for you, how do you capture someone's interest within the first 10 to 15 seconds? What can you say that will make them interested in you? And it starts by going up to them and I, I, my batting average is about a hundred percent when this, the person has actually made an impact in my life Mm -hmm. when there's a reason I'm approaching them. If it's just a random person, it goes down dramatically. But if you can go up to a person who has truly touched your life and you can say, first and foremost, thank you. You did X, Y, and Z, and this is the impact that it had made. And frankly, right now, I need to ask for your help. Use the word your help. I need your help. I'm going through this transition. I'm going through whatever, and I don't know what I can do to add value to you, but if you would be willing to invest 15 minutes, I promise I will take action, and I promise that I will find a way to add value to you. How can we make this happen? Yeah, and I like, in, in particular, it's funny because it's like these like small nuances that I think are so powerful and so important, and not to get like you know, tight, like get into the nitty gritty of it or, or, or focus too much on like the nitty gritty, nitty gritty is good. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I think it is. I think it is sometimes. So like one thing I want to point out is the fact that for those listening, it's the fact that when you start out, um, w- w- with a kind and kind of generous comment, you, the being authentic was important in this context. Like not, you know, like you legitimately actually believe like God value out of this guy and his speech and so on and so forth. But then I think what's really important about that, 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 15 seconds right there is that you ended it with a, with a, a clear call to action. Mm-hmm. How, how do we make this happen? Or, or how do we link, like, how can we make, like, anything like that, that then gives the other person kind of a chance to say yes or no, kind of like right away. I think it's a really powerful thing to do. I think a lot of people don't do that in person, though. But I think when you do it in person, it's, you know, again, you do it 
authentically do it reasonably and kind of the way you d- you presented it, I didn't feel uncomfortable about it. Like I wouldn't have felt uncomfortable if somebody came out to me that way. You know what I mean? So if you do yeah. it the right way, like you're not going to, it's not going to be offensive. It's going to be, it's going to be really, um, uh, I'm blanking on the word, but you're going to feel good about yourself when somebody comes up to you and says that to you. And then when mm-hmm. they give you an, uh, an option to, for 15 minutes, I mean, who can't spare 15 minutes, right? So I like, I really like your, 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 um, your technique there. I think that's great. Thank you. And, and I'll tell you st- another story of a time, and this happened just a few months ago, where I, this, the person I approached hadn't made a major impact in my life, but I approached him anyways. And I, I was I showed up to this one networking event that I've or conference that I've attended for some time and uh, people have started to know who I am and and my podcast and so somebody came up to me like hey you need to interview that guy and I go who's that guy and they say you ever heard of barefoot wine I'm like yeah I remember my hangovers in college he said well that's the guy he just sold it for millions and millions of dollars and he's got a great entrepreneurial story and I'm going crap you're right I should talk to him and so we're getting ready to go back into the session and it's like the freaking herd of cattle being corralled back into the room and the guy is walking in. He looks like he just doesn't want to be bothering. He's got two glasses of water, one in each hand. Um, and people are kind of bumping into him and he looks all flustered and I'm like, Nope, got to go up to him. And so what I did is I walked up to him and I tapped him on the shoulder. Like he was a buddy of mine. And he looked at me, like snapped his head around and goes, and just looks at me funny. And I go, Hey, I'm Jeff. And he stops dead in his tracks. He's like, hi. And I said, you know, um, I'm very familiar with what you did. I want to thank you for all the hangovers in college. But on a serious note, I'm serious. I I, I want to know, you you have accomplished so much. And frankly, I know you're out to really make an impact. Where do you need the most help right now? And he stops dead in his tracks. And his whole body, his whole demeanor just changed. And he looks at me and he goes, now, isn't that an interesting question? Let's go outside. And we went outside and I just spent 15 minutes asking questions about where his focus is moving forward, what he's trying to accomplish, the barriers, the limitations, the people that he needs access to and came to find out that I could legitimately help him personally and just started saying, hey man, I would be happy to show you how you can do this. I think you may want to consider doing X, Y, and Z. And he looked at me and he goes, you know what? You're relatively local. Why don't you fly up and come stay at my estate for the weekend? We'll drink good wine and we'll get to dive into this a little bit more. That's incredible. <laughs> just from just from one introduction, just from taking that leap. I love that. I started by being more interested in him than trying to get him to think that I was interesting. It's awesome. I'm going to have to like listen to this interview again myself to to fully take this all in. This is really good. <laughs> okay, so then so you 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 know, you start by you, I mean, uh, fundamentally you're more interested in other people. You're you're looking for ways to provide value. You're making these connections and then like I guess how you know I I feel like it's something that for for people like I'm I'm a bit of an introvert so I can kind of uh, or a lot of an introvert so I can I can resonate with people who are do not like approaching other people. Um, how, I guess how do you get over that fear of to do that approach and then how do you make it so you don't come off just like painfully awkward? <laughs> like, so <laughs> which I feel like is a fear of of people who are and I'm just projecting here. Uh, awesome who question. Are introverted. <laughs> yeah, awesome question. And and my hope here is to change the way that you look at things so that the things you look at will change. I want you to imagine that I just handed you a stack of $100 bills. And I am asking you now to go into a room with people, heavy hitters, and I want you to simply go say hi and hand them a $100 bill. What is your confidence level right now? Do you think you can do that? Yeah, I think so. Why? Because, uh, it's a hundred dollars. It's uh, that's pure value, right? It's a hundred dollars of value. And yep. why would somebody turn down value? Now, vice versa, if I asked you to walk into that room and to go up to each person and ask them for a hundred dollars, I'm sure you would feel very differently, right? But when you show up to serve, when you show up to add value to people, legitimately, your fears, your confi- your your fears melt away, and your confidence goes through the roof. Now. What I'm here to tell you is that you have value. You just haven't realized it up until this point, likely. There is nobody else in the world who sees the world the exact way that you do, the exact perspective, and that perspective is valuable. And you have a skill set that is somebody else's weakness. You just haven't figured out where that matches yet. So if you walk in the room with the sole intention of recognizing that I am a person of value, 
and that I'm simply showing up trying to figure out where people's biggest challenges are and how I can add value to them. You are legitimately approaching every single interaction and handing them $100. Now, you may be saying, how the heck can I add value to somebody who is light years ahead of me? How can I add value to a major CEO? How can I add value to a really successful entrepreneur? How can I add value to a real estate investor? I don't know. But here's the deal. Don't pretend like you have this magical crystal ball that tells you all the answers. You don't, and I don't have it either. But what I do do is I recognize I'm just going to ask them where they need help. I'm going to let them tell me. And in the case that I can help them, I'm going to tell them I can help them. If it's a case where I happen to know somebody who can help them, I'm going to tell them and I'm going to make a connection. And if neither of those apply, if I can't help them and I cannot make an introduction, what I will say to them in this case, like I will say this to you, Tom, I unfortunately can't help you directly in terms of building your community. I don't off the top of my head know anybody as well, but what I will do is scout for you. And I constantly am building my network. And if I come across somebody who happens to fit that mold where they have built that successful online community, I promise I will find a way to connect the two of you. Would that be okay? That's awesome. What's your thought about me in this moment? That I, I mean, I feel compelled to say yes. And, and absolutely, like, let's, I, I can, you know, who, who wouldn't want that help? And are you thinking positive thoughts about me? Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. And what you may realize or not is that I just added value to Tom, even though I haven't delivered crap to him other than a promise, which is genuine. It has to be genuine, although, because people will sniff that out. Mm-hmm. And I do mean that. Um, but you added value. And look at every relationship like a bank account. When, if I told you to walk into a bank right now, I want you to walk in, I want you to go up to the teller, and you're going to say, I want to open a bank account. They're going to sit you down. They're going to give you the paperwork. You fill it out. You sign your signature on the very last section. You put the pen down. The first thing you do is you look up and you say, I would like to withdraw $1,000. Are they going to say yes? <laughs> no, they won't. And why not? You haven't put any money in the bank. You haven't made any deposits. Mm -hmm. We know this to be true with bank accounts, yet why is it with relationships we constantly approach asking to make withdrawals before we ever make a deposit? Show up to the room, show up in situations just looking to make deposits, and what you will find is all of a sudden you have very, very fruitful, deep, meaningful relationships with some pretty freaking cool people who will bend over backwards to help you. And I guess, and then, uh, you know, in terms of like the initial, so I, I think this is incredibly valuable for the inter- initial um, introduction and kind of getting that foot in the door. Um, and I know, I know we're winding down on time here, so I'm going to be respectful of this. So you just let me know if you have to get going. But um, I do want to ask, so how do you do that, that follow-up stuff? And how do you maintain these relationships? I, I assume the answer is going to be, you know, you're continue to provide value, but, but give me some examples about how you can, you know, you can't just keep asking that same question, or or can you? And and, and what what's your advice for kind of maintaining these relationships and 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 moving forward, at, like with with a mentor, or somebody you respect, or something like that? Yeah, and this is where, um, you know, this is where I've built out a, a system that really shows you this. And and when you go to findthebestmentors.com, dot com, um, you'll naturally get a series of emails that will give you opportunities to learn about some of this stuff, but. Bottom line, recognize that a mentor-mentee relationship doesn't just happen. It's not like you pop down on one knee, open up a box, show them a shiny ring. It's like, will you be my mentor? The answer is no. That evolves over time. It starts by you asking for help and them making an investment in you, which is exactly what they do when they give you their time. They invest their most valuable resource in you. And when you take action, key there, when you take action and get results and share the results with them, share the success with them, they get a return on their investment. And when people get a return on their investment, they make an investment again. And you continue to do that over and over again, and the relationship naturally builds. That's awesome. Okay, so you know we've been focusing on, uh, and again, incredible value. I know people are going to appreciate this. I, I I know I did, and I would. I'm actually going to definitely listen to it again. I don't often listen to my episodes again, but I there's there's points here that I think are really relevant um, for me and really for anybody. Um, well, yeah, actually, real quick question on this before I, I segue. But do you feel like this is an appropriate um, uh, way to kind of like interact with people to approach people, like no matter what level you're at? Yes, absolutely. Um, I've leveraged it on my peers, which I almost have a harder time doing because it's like, where do you need the most help right now? And they look at me, they're like, who are you? What space alien are you? Mm. Um, But when I ask, I approach millionaires and billionaires with this question, they know they have an answer. 
Because it's like it's very clear. Like they'll look at you and they'll be like, "Hey, thanks so much for asking. I need help with X, Y, and Z." And I'll be like, uh, sorry, I can't help you. I don't know anybody, but can I connect to you? Can I scout for you? <laughs> you know, and I go through that process. But every interaction I have, you know, every time I'm on the phone with a mentor, it's like, hey, thank you so much for the time. Anything you need help with right now? Is there anything I can do for you? I want to add value to you. How can I help you? And they will tell me and I will go do that for them. What's an example of, of, of that in some cases? You don't have to give a specific one, uh, or maybe you couldn't, you don't have to name names or anything like that. But what's like, I feel like anytime some of that, sometimes that, that question is asked, like you should be ready to deliver. But I often feel like when people are asked that question, they often are just like, oh, no, like, don't worry about it. I'm good. Like, but do you, do you ever find that like they, they come back and say, yeah, this is what I need help with? And then, so what are some of those examples? Because I'm also, here's another concern I think people might have is what if he says, well, here's what I need. And you, you were like, okay, well, I can't do that. <laughs> you know, then it's then, like, uh oh. Then you say, Tom, unfortunately, I can't help you there. And I don't know anybody off the top of my head that I can connect you with. But, what I will do is keep an eye out. And if I do meet somebody or some, suddenly come across a resource that I think would be of value, would it be okay if I share that with you? Nice. So pretty simple stuff, huh? <laughs> it's pretty simple stuff. It's, it. it's, it's not hard. I mean, at this point, you know, I've been coaching enough other people on this that the testimonials are rolling and they're like, this stuff is not hard. You just have to try it. And once you try it and you get results, your mind expands. All of a sudden you're like, holy crap, this really isn't that hard. Man, I'm like all revved up to like go to a conference right now and yeah. try this out. <laughs> know, that's awesome. awesome. Cool. Well, okay. So, you know, we're, we're winding up, you know, the, the, we're coming up to about, um, yeah, over half an hour here, but I mean, it's just gone by so fast for me. But um, my question to you is, what are you working on now? Tell us a little bit about that. Tell us a little bit about what you're building. Um, and then, uh, yeah, start, start there and then I'll, I'll wrap sure. it up here and we'll give you a chance to kind of close out with, uh, with, with everybody and where they can reach out to you. So at this point, I have made a, a very serious commitment to turning my podcast into a business and building out my machine on the back end because I have spent enough time where I have I've gotten on the phone with my listeners and found out what their pain was. I know where they need help. I, and I have developed digital courses. I've developed online coaching, like uh, monthly mentor calls where people can join in. I've developed higher level masterminds, like all this stuff. I've got it all developed. Now I'm working on actually getting that into a fluid machine so that when you go to find the best mentors.com, you know, you're going to get amazing value and naturally you're going to get nurtured and be offered the right types of, of products that will, you know, if you want to take part in great. And if not, you know, I continue to add amazing value, but it really becomes a business in an automated machine. And if for you personally, is this something that you want to go to more full time? And, and even though you enjoy your, your current day job and everything like this, do you foresee this becoming bigger than that? And, and I want, I want this to be generating $20,000 a month in passive income so that I can choose to do my medical job. Make I, sense? I like that. Cause I like stuff. my job. It's good stuff, but I, I want to wake up every day and take off, take my head off the pillow and walk into those hospitals knowing that I am choosing to do it that day. And when it's a choice, that's a very empowering day. Man, and we could dive into this. If I, I might have to get you on the the, uh, the podcast again and and dig into kind of how you're how because I'm really I'm going to be I, I think I mean I just just hearing this I think you have obviously great great material I think you know what you're talking about I've seen what you do I've heard your podcast I know it's all good so I'm really excited to see you actually develop this so I definitely oh, want to get you. you on the podcast in like six to twelve months to just see where you're at because. I think that's pretty cool to be for you when I hear that you're so clear about that. I'm like really excited for you and excited to see how that goes. Nice. Yeah, we'd be happy to. Awesome. Well, okay, Jeff, um, you know, for, for now, I know we've, we've taken up quite a bit of your time, an immense amount of value you've given. Tell us where we can reach out to you now uh, for the listeners and, and where they can get a hold of you. Absolutely. So the first place is The Mentee is the name of the podcast. Like I'm The Mentee, they're my mentors, M-E-N-T-E-E. -E. If you want to get that free course that will hold your hand for seven days to meeting seven people, it is Find the Best Mentors mentors with an s.com i'm all over social media at jeff woods that's jeff with a g g e o f f woods w o o d s and i'll offer you the same thing that i've offered my listeners where the opportunity just to hop on the phone with me if this has resonated with you and you just want to get some free mentorship just have a conversation so i can figure out where you need help and just try to help you menteepodcast.com slash call you can book a time on my calendar and we'll spend some time together and i'll do what i can to help you 
Awesome, Jeff. Really incredible, man. Excited to see where you go from here because uh, I think you're going to do big things. So thank you so much for being on In the Trenches, man. And uh, for the listeners, go check out Jeff. His his podcast is awesome. Go go grab a call with him. I'm, I'm, I challenge you to do that and, and let him know that you came from uh, In the Trenches. That would, that would pump me up. Please do. All cool. right, guys. All right, Jeff. Thanks so much, man. Thanks. And that wraps up another broadcast of In the Trenches. If you'd like to check out the show notes, just head over to tommorcus.com slash podcast, where you'll find the latest broadcast. And if you enjoyed today's broadcast, please do me a favor and leave a rating and review on iTunes. That's the fastest, simplest, easiest way to support my creative work, and it would really mean a lot to me. As always, this is Tom Morcus, and if you're listening to this, you are the resistance.